Hey -o, and what is up gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight and this Saturday night, 24 hours before WrestleMania as the WWE inducts their 2019 Hall of Fame class, Ring of Honor and New Japan join forces to bring us the G1 Supercard live from Madison Square Garden and I'm going to be there. And we're going to talk about it right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare, and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's G1 Supercard Preview Show. Let's do it. Alright wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. Ironically enough, the last time I was in Madison Square Garden was for the WWE Hall of Fame back in 2012, just before WrestleMania 29. And if you would have told me back then that the next time I would be stepping foot into Madison Square Garden for professional wrestling, it would be for a Ring of Honor show or a New Japan show, or even better, a combined effort between Ring of Honor and New Japan to bring us a super card during WrestleMania weekend, I would have told you you were nuts. I would have never believed you. I said, you are full of shit, bro. But that's not what happened. In fact, if you would have told me the exact same thing just a little bit over a year ago, I still would have had the same exact stance. I would have told you you were nuts. There's no way that that was going to happen. It's historically been known that Madison Square Garden has been the stronghold of the WWE for almost a hundred years, at least in my lifetime. Never has another promotion ever been able to run the Garden. Even WCW, in the heights of their popularity, when they were beating the WWE into the ground week after week, couldn't nudge their way into the hallowed halls of the world's most famous arena. But at this juncture, the relationship between the WWE and Madison Square Garden has soured to a point where we are being given this tremendous opportunity to be a part of history and I get to do just that. I bought myself a ticket when this was announced because I wanted to be part of this once in a lifetime event. It doesn't happen that often and I just felt a need to be there. You needed to understand at that time there was so much going on that I just felt like this was going to be one of the biggest things ever to happen in wrestling. And we keep it real here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. If this is your first time around here, this is the hammer of reality. And that's what I do. We keep shit real here. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. And I want all of you New Japan guys to take it easy on me. Because I'm not a diehard like most of you guys are. And you need to understand that when I bought this ticket, the Bullet Club was at the highest peak it's ever been. There was no talk of AEW. There was no new promotion coming out of the woodworks to have a mass exodus of talent leave New Japan. We had the possibility of guys like Daniel Bryan, whose contract status at the time these tickets went on sale was, was on sale were still unknown. And there was actually a very heavily speculated rumor at the time being talked about by some real legit people in the industry stating that it was being talked about that there was a possibility of seeing Kenny Omega versus Daniel Bryan for the heavyweight championship at Madison Square Garden at this show. There was also talks of this possibly being the follow-up to All In, which we didn't know what that was going to be. We didn't know whether it was going to be a, a new promotion, as it turned out to be, or if it was going to be an extension of Ring of Honor and the New Japan Bullet Club partnership. So I felt like this was going to be something epic. But instead, I get a main event with Jay White in it. Now, you might be a big Jay White fan, and that's fine. You know, I have nothing really against Jay White. He's just... Not my cup of tea, and I can't tell you exactly why. I just look at him and I feel like he's Kenny Omega Jr. Well, Kenny Omega Light. You know, like there's Bud Light and there's Budweiser. You know, and Bud Light, you know, it's not bad. It just doesn't have as much flavor as the original. It's not as bold as the real Bud Light. And that's the kind of comparison I get between Jay White and Kenny Omega. 
I feel like New Japan's just like, well, Kenny left us. We'll put it on the next best guy that kind of is like him. When I, I guess it should have just went back to Okada or one of the other guys. Uh, but I'm, I'm just not a big Jay White guy. So right off the bat, the main event, I, I'm sure, you know, it's nothing against his talent or, or anything. I'm sure it'll be a good match. I'm just, Jay White's not a guy that's going to draw me in there. And that's one of the advantages of selling about 90% of the venue before you even announce one match. Like, you could literally throw anything and you have people coming to the show before you even know what you're doing. So let that be a lesson to you, and maybe I should learn a lesson to myself. Don't buy into something until you really know what you're getting for sure. And that's kind of hard in this day and age, because when the tickets go on sale, they're going to be gone like that. The next thing you know, you're going to be on StubHub paying three times the amount for something you could have had if this turned out to be as big as it actually could have been. But now we got no Young Bucks. We got no Omega. We got no Cody Rhodes and the Nightmare Family. We don't have any of that. And that's pretty much the whole reason I was going. The whole reason I wanted to be a part of it. But I'm going to leave it to you guys. All of you guys that are the experts, I want you guys to tell me that this card that we're about to talk about, is this a good show? Because I honestly couldn't tell you. There's a couple of matches on here right off the bat. I know right right away I'm automatically interested in seeing. But for the most part, like I said, I'm not a diehard. I'm, I'm not like invested in half of the guys on this card. I just wanted to be part of something special. And I thought it was going to involve more people that I actually was invested in. But instead I get this. And it is up to you by the end of this video to tell me if this G1 Supercard is worthy of Madison Square Garden. Or if maybe my feelings are right. I just feel a little slighted. I feel a little bit ripped off because I paid for something that I thought I was going to get and I didn't get those said things. But it's probably going to be, I shouldn't say probably, it's going to be a hell of a show. I'm going to have a great time and I'm, I'm still happy that I'm going just to be able to say that I was at the G1 Supercard in Madison Square Garden on this day and it's going to be great. So let's go down this card, and we'll start right from the top, and we'll go all the way down. The IWGP heavyweight champion, Jay White, is going to be defending against Kazuchika Okada. And I hope that Okada wins. I'm going to be pulling for Okada, if I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen this guy pull off some of the baddest matches in the history of professional wrestling. More often than not, with Kenny Omega across the ring from him. And I'm looking forward to seeing him. I've never had the opportunity to see Okada live. And this is going to be something special for me since I've be become such a fan of his over the last couple of years. And I'm going with Okada all the way there. We're going to have a ROH World Champion, Jay Lethal, defending the title against Marty Skrull and Matt Taven in a triple threat ladder match you put a championship up for grabs in a ladder match and you put two three ten twenty men it doesn't matter how many men it's going to be that ladder match is going to tear the house down ladder matches were born in madison square garden so it is a proper place for this to be going down and jay lethal is no nonsense marty Skrull, the villain is fantastic i'm happy to see him at least i got one member of the bullet club in there that i'm going to get to see matt taven i'm not too familiar with but i'm sure they are going to give us one hell of a match for the ring of honor championship and i'm thinking jay lethal successful in his defense all the way IWGP Intercontinental Champion Tetsuya Naito defends his championship against Kota Ibushi. I almost marked out over Kota Ibushi when I witnessed his greatness in the WWE's Cruiserweight Classic. And I definitely expected him to come and be ruined by the WWE, but he obviously is a much smarter man than Shinsuke Nakamura because he stayed away and he stayed where he was and now he is going for the Intercontinental Championship. Naito has been fighting with Chris Jericho as of late and he is a badass. <laughs> He's one of the guys on the New Japan roster that I actually really do enjoy and going up against Ibushi this is going to be a hell of a title match. I'm rooting for Ibushi to win this thing but I think Naito will probably come out on top successfully defending his championship. 
The Rev Pro British heavyweight champion Zack Sabre Jr. defends his title against Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now, Tanahashi is a hot property in the independence right now. I hear his name almost as often as I hear Okada's name. I am, again, much like I am with, with uh, Jay White, I am not a fan of Zack Sabre Jr. When I first witnessed him in the WWE's Cruiserweight Classic as well, I just didn't understand what all the hype was about. I'm not a, a guy big on the finger manipulation thing. I'm, I don't even like it so much when Pete Dunne does it. He makes it look brutal and painful, at least. I mean, this guy, Zack Sabre Jr., he weighs about 50 pounds soaking wet. He's not imposing. He doesn't look threatening. He could probably choke me out. It's nothing against him personally. I just don't feel his type of a wrestler. He reminds me almost of like a British Bob Backlund. If that's a comparison that that works for you, you let me know, but I wasn't a big Bob Backlund guy either, just not my type of wrestler, and I just don't get why everybody's so big on Zack Sabre Jr. Tanahashi, I think, is probably going to win this, just based off of the fact that everybody's so high on this guy that I think that he would probably be the smart bet to go over, and I think Zack Sabre Jr. plays heel, so... I'm not sure. Last I seen him, he was a bubblegum babyface in the WWE. I'm pretty sure that he is not that everywhere else, but we'll have to wait and see when we go to this show on Saturday night. But I'm pulling for Tanahashi just because, like I said, not a big Zack Sabre Jr. guy. And if this is upsetting to any of you guys, I apologize. Listen, everybody's got their tastes, right? Some people like chocolate. Some people like vanilla. Some people like chocolate and vanilla mixed, which I never fucking understood because when you mix chocolate and vanilla, it just becomes fucking chocolate, right? It just becomes like a light version of chocolate, like milk chocolate instead of dark chocolate. Like, what's the fucking difference? Chocolate is chocolate. No, that's actually not true. It's a bad analogy. Anyway, fuck the ice cream. Let's get back to the wrestling. <laughs> Title versus title match, the IWGP Tag Team Champions, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa versus the ROH Tag Team Champions, PCO and Brody King. And they will also have the Briscoes, the team of Evil and Sonata to also deal with in this fatal four-way Tag Team Championship matchup. I'm looking forward to seeing PCO in action, and that's something... 20 years ago, little kid Nick would have been laughing at you because PCO was just a jobber to me. He was just, you know, one of the Quebecers. He was that stupid-looking pirate guy with the eye patch walking around with Jacques Rougeau. And I hated him. But now he's transformed himself into this cable-esque Terminator cyborg fucking guy that's just absolutely amazing. And I got to see him wrestle at House of Glory, and I look forward to seeing him wrestle once again. The guy is an absolute maniac. I don't know his partner, Brody King. I don't know who he is. The Briscoes, I'm big fans of. I love the Tonga uh, and Loa combination. They are the new Bullet Club. I know, whatever, but that's not what I was really looking forward to seeing. This should be a hell of a tag team matchup, and I'm actually going for PCO. I want the team of PCO and Brody King to win just for PCO. So let's let's call it at that. The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Taiji Ishimori defends against Dragon Lee and Bandito in a triple threat match. Probably going to be a hell of a match. I don't know any of these guys. Not familiar with any of them. And it's a championship matchup, so I'm sure it's going to be high stakes. High risk, high reward type of matchup. These guys are, might even actually steal the show, for all I know. But this is, I, I don't know who to call up, so I'm just going to say the champion retains here. This I'm very interested in. Bully Ray's New York City Street Fight Open Challenge. As long as it is not answered by Joey Ryan, I will be fucking happy with it. There's big rumors going around that it's going to be Juice Robinson. There's a couple of Japanese wrestlers he's been calling out, but a lot of people, if you pay attention to Bully Ray on social media, a lot of people that they are throwing the names in the hat, he's just absolutely shitting all over them and saying they are not worthy of fighting him in Madison Square Garden. It'll be interesting to see who finally it is, if it's not multiple competitors before the night is through that tries to take Billy, Bully Ray on in his Street Fight Open Challenge. So that is one of the more interesting things I'm looking forward to on the night. 
We have a Woman of Honor Championship matchup. The champion, Mayu Awatani, defends against Kelly Klein. I don't, again, I don't, I'm not familiar with either one of these girls, and we'll just pick Kelly Klein just for the hell of it, because why not? Kelly Klein. Rush is going to take on Dalton Castle in a singles match. I like Dalton Castle. I'm a big fan of his. I'm not too familiar with Rush, so we're going to go with Dalton Castle. Hope that he gets the win there. Another title versus title match as the never openweight champion Will Ospreay will take on the ROH TV champion Jeff Cobb. This is a match that speaks for itself. I cannot wait to see this fucking matchup. It'll be my first chance to see Will Ospreay live. I have been fortunate enough to see Jeff Cobb compete in House of Glory. He was also my favorite character in all of Lucha Underground, which was Matanza. A, he's just an amazing specimen, and he's a fantastic guy. I got to meet him at the show that I happened to see him perform at, and he's just a wonderful guy, very friendly, very giving of his time, very, very pleasant and respectful, as I was in return, and we had a, a drink at the bar that night, and he's just a fucking awesome talent and an awesome guy. Will Ospreay, if you don't know who he is, you probably got your head under a rock. He's probably one of the most talked about talents in all of the independents, and he is probably what I thought Zack Sabre Jr. was. You know, when I see how Will Ospreay performs, that's what I guess I thought was I was going to see when I seen other people like him. And, it, you know, Jay White is considerably better than um, Zack Sabre Jr., but in my mind, Will Ospreay is way better than Jay White. And I'm looking forward to this matchup probably the most because it's going to be one hell of a contest. Two completely contrasting styles. Power versus speed and agility always makes for a great match, and this is going to be one hell of a match to remember. And the show, pre-show, is going to start off with the 30 entrant honor rumble match. As of right now, Kenny King, PJ Black, The Bouncers, Cheeseburger, and... Jushin Thunder Liger has all been confirmed to be part of this 30 entrant on a rumble. Here's where Joey Ryan will probably make his appearance and I will want to just throw up all over myself. He is the thing I hate the most in professional wrestling. That's just my personal thing that you might not feel the same way, but I hate everything the guy brings to professional wrestling and I don't look forward to seeing him and I hope he doesn't come out with a bunch of penises or throwing up on people and, and fucking tampons and all kinds of ridiculousness that he brings to the table. But I'm almost positive he's going to end up showing his fucking face here. I hope that's not the case. I can't even begin to imagine the other 22 or 3 names that we could throw into this list to see who is going to be in this pre-show battle royal. The one special thing is Jushin Thunder Liger did announce that he will be retiring at the show in the Tokyo Dome in 2020, which means as we wind this year down, and as he winds his career down, rather, this will be the very last time, if not maybe even the first and last time, Jushin Thunder Liger will perform at Madison Square Garden. And it's going to be one hell of a night. I look forward to just being a part of it, eating up that atmosphere. I hope it's a hot crowd, and I hope it ends up being worth the money I paid to be there, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a great show, but again, I want you guys to tell me everything I told you. This is what has been announced up to now. Is this a good show? Am I in for a good night? I leave that in your discretion, so make sure you hit me up in the comment section down below and tell me what you think I'm I'm missing, or if I'm if I should be even more excited than I am, because for some reason, I just feel like this could have been much better. But that's just my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. And that's why you guys come to me in the first place. And if you want to be a part of it with me, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram. I put it down there for you guys. The Instagram tag is there. My Twitter tag is there as well. I am going to be very active all week long on social media, trying to bring you guys as much coverage of all this stuff as I possibly can, up until and including the G1 Supercard, and also 
WrestleMania. As this is the WWE's week, yes, we are here talking about this, but if you are going to also be watching everything else, don't forget to check out everything else we got for you guys on this channel this week. We have got the preview of the best independent shows coming anywhere to New York City, and they are all happening during Culture Clash Week in Jamaica, Queens, and I have got the preview of all three big shows being put on in conjunction with House of Glory in New York City. You want to know about it? It's going to be here. I'm going to tell you about it because that's my job, and we are also, as always, going to be your official source for previews and predictions for everything WWE-related from NXT TakeOver New York and WrestleMania 35, which I will also be attending. I am going to be dead by the time we get to next Wednesday and the Fallout shows are over and all the reviews and the recording is done, I'm going to be a dead duck. And I want to thank you guys for being here with me because without you guys, there's no reason for me to be here killing myself. I love my sledgeheads, my loyal family, and if you are not one of them by now, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and become one of the Sledgehammer Club, one of the, one of the biggest and best groups of professional wrestling fans you can find anywhere on the internet. The best internet wrestling community resides right here on Sledgehammer TV. Make sure you follow everything. The best way not to miss a thing is to make sure that you are notified. So hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribe. And then smash that like button if you enjoyed anything I have to say. Maybe you agree with me about Jay White. Maybe you don't like Zack Sabre Jr. either. Maybe you were a little bit pissed off that you didn't get to go to the G1 Supercard and you want to smack me in the face because I'm not being as appreciative as maybe I should be. You, you're allowed to do that. Just all you got to do is hit the thumbs up so that I know that that's what you wanted to do. And then share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they're big Ring of Honor and New Japan fans and are maybe even going to the G1 Supercard. And if you see me there and you're going to be there, never be afraid to come and say hello. Maybe take a picture that we could put up on the Instagram together. My name, ladies and gentlemen, is Nick Nightmare. This is the team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. His tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue, the snowball microphone, the most important member of the team, as always, is each and every single one of you. Thank you for being here with us today, and don't forget to check out everything we got coming at you all WrestleMania week long. That, my friends, is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube. Dot com. Uh -huh.